Welcome. This is From Beyond the Pain, an Illinois basketball podcast. I'm Cody. You can follow me on Twitter at Cody underscore CHGO. Boy, oh boy, what a day, guys. What a day. Jason, already in the chat here on YouTube, saying ILL, my friend. I-N-I, man. What a day. Illinois beats Wisconsin to win the Big Ten Tournament Championship. Second Big Ten Tournament Championship in four years. Third Big Ten title in four years, if you want to count uh, the quote-unquote term Big Ten title. Um, what a what a weekend for Illinois basketball. What a weekend for Terrence Shannon Jr. What a game for Terrence Shannon Jr. today. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What a day. What a day. Um, I don't even know. I've been thinking about it for a while, like wh- where to even start uh, with with this. Uh, there's so much to to unpack, so much to talk about. Illinois uh, get they they. I think they probably secured themselves a three seed, beating Nebraska yesterday, and they end up getting they they end up beating Wisconsin today to basically like for sure get a three seed, and that's what happened. Uh, they're going to play Moorhead State on Thursday in the NCAA tournament to kick off March Madness. Could potentially play uh, BYU or – I think I can say this. I'm saying the school right. Duskany. Du- du- they're an A-10 school, and they have not made the NCAA tournament in like 40 years. I should probably learn how to say their school's name. Um, anyway, yeah, well, just an incredible – Incredible day if you're an Illini fan, man. I, I don't know how else to really say it. Um, I we let's start with the box score, then we can kind of go into a lot of things that Brad Underwood said in in uh in post game. We can talk about we'll talk about some major plays. Um, we'll talk about the NCAA tournament. So before we get too far deep, before we get too far deep, please hit the like button. If you're watching on Twitter or my Facebook page, please come to the YouTube. There's the the link to the YouTube, uh, to my YouTube account is in the description for both. Just c- click that YouTube link, come here, hit the like button, hit that subscribe button. Um, I'd love to know your thoughts, how you're feeling about Illinois going into the NCAA tournament, how you felt about Illinois during this game. Uh, who's frustrating you right now? Who's has you excited? how you feel about Brad Underwood right now. I, I, I want to know it all. I really do. I really want to know it all because um, I I say this a lot. We used to dream of times like this. We used to dream of times like this, guys. We used to dream of times like this. I remember, you know, the Laurent Lor- Lor- Black days, the Kendrick Nunn days, those, those teams that, you know they just never were good enough under John Gross, and you, and and even like the back end of the Bruce Weber era, like the frustrations that the Brandon Paul, DJ Richardson, and Myers Leonard teams brought. Like they were, they had some fun moments. They were fun players, but they just never were good enough to make you feel like this program was in a good spot. Right? The last five years, Illinois is going to the NCAA tournament. It will last four years for sure. One of those years they would have, but because the NCAA tournament was canceled because of the pandemic, I guess you technically can't count it. But they would have gone to the NCAA tournament that year. But I, I just have to emphasize that we cannot take these these the games like today, the, the era that we're living in, we cannot take this for granted, people. We just simply cannot because... Listen, maybe it's PTSD because Bill Self left and went to Kansas and is like turn like he's a legend, right? Uh, and I'm not I'm not saying that Brad Underwood's ever going to leave, whatever. But people want Brad Underwood to leave. There's a large part of the fan base that 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 can't stand Brad. And then there's people like me who I think is can be critical, but obviously stands him a little bit more than probably a lot of people, and that's fine, right? The point is, the point is though. Like Illinois, is, they're not. We are not a blue blood school. We are not a blue blood school, and that's okay. All right, but when you got two Big Ten tournament titles in four years, three Big Ten titles in all together in four years, three and four years, like I, I can't, I, I can't ask for too much more. Yes, I want more success in March. Yes, I want a Sweet Sixteen. 
Yes, I want a Final Four. I want to go to Elite Eight. I, I want to experience a long march. You know, I of course I want a national title, right? But even the best coaches in college hoops, you know, get upset, disappoint in March, all right? There's still plenty of time for Brad to, you know, I guess change a narrative in some ways. Maybe this is the year where he kind of shifts that narrative a little bit. I bring all this up because I saw my friend Mike Carpenter send a tweet before I started the show. And I got to take a drink of water before I, my mouth continues to get dry. I saw my friend Mike Carpenter send a tweet um, just a little bit ago. And he said from 2000 to 2006, Illinois had four Big Ten regular season titles, two Big Ten tournament titles, two Sweet 16s, an Elite Eight, and of course a Final Four from in 0405, right? That was from 2000 to 2006. These, in the Brad Underwood era, there's one Big Ten regular season title and two Big Ten tournament titles. All right. And that's it. Of course, it's not as good as the 2000 to 2006 era for sure. Right. But there was a long gap in between there where Illinois wasn't doing anything like that. Shit. They've won eight straight against Wisconsin. I remember when Wisconsin used to own us. They've won eight straight games against Wisconsin. (laughs) It's unreal. It's unreal. So, again, we used to dream of times like this. All right. So again, not going to tell y'all how to fan. What I am going to say is just enjoy the good times when you actually have the good times. You know, that line from Andy Bernard in the office, like I used, I wish I could have remembered the good old days during the good old days or something like that. I can't remember the exact quote, but I think if you watch the office, you know, you probably know what I'm talking about. It's towards the very end of the show, basically. And that like I'm trying to help y'all not go down that path because today is a special day. Second Big Ten tournament title in four years. It's impressive, man. It's impressive. And every game this weekend, Illinois trailed by double digits and made comebacks to win. They trailed by 15 against Nebraska in the second half yesterday. Today, they got down 10 or 11 points somewhere in that first five to six minutes of the second half and made a comeback quickly and then was neck and neck with Wisconsin. And then Terrence Shannon Jr. showed up when you absolutely needed Terrence Shannon Jr. to show up, man. Terrence Shannon Jr. is making the argument to get his name in the rafters. If he if he gets out of this – out of this – uh you know, off the field, off the court stuff, right? If if all of that goes away once the season is over and 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 whatever, he is making the case to get his name put up in the rafters. He's legitimately making the case to be recognized as one of the greatest Illini basketball players ever. Okay, maybe not ever, but of my lifetime. For sure of my lifetime, okay? When I think about the best Illini players of my lifetime, I'm thinking about Darren Williams, D. Brown, Luther Head, James Augustine, Roger Powell, Io DeSumo, Brandon Paul, Myers Leonard, DJ Richardson. You know, <laughs> like... I He's going to... If, if, he, if he gets out of this off the court stuff. He is going to be a lottery pick. To, to me there is no reason why he won't be a lottery pick if he gets out of all this off the court stuff, all right? And he, he's just he just everything he does on the court it just continues to to blow my mind sometimes. When they needed a shot to when they needed a shot after Klesman Klesman made those two threes. When they needed a bucket what did he do? He hit that three with about a minute and a half to go. And I swear to you, I already tweeted the video out. It's on my TikTok. I'm going to put it on my YouTube shorts here after the show. The reaction I had whenever that happened, it was like I knew that the game was over. 
I knew that the game was over when that happened. That's what it felt like. I He hit that three about a minute and a half to take an 88 to 85 lead and timeout Wisconsin. And you just, you felt like you just won the game there, even though there's still a minute and a half and all kinds of things could happen, but it felt like the game was over to me in that moment. So he just, he's done it time and time again this year where he has helped them win games in, in, in the clutch down the stretch, however you want to call it. Today was 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 that. His worst game this year was at home against Purdue. That's it. And and, and I know he had some bad games technically when he came back uh, from the suspension. First five, six games, not his greatest, right? People were concerned, right? Yeah, he's, I mean, what a weekend for this kid. What a weekend for Terrence Shannon Jr. 34 points today. 15 of 17 from the free throw line, 8 of 15 from the field, one steal, two assists, four rebounds. I know the haters will bring up the you know 17 free throws. The guy, the kid, is aggressive, man. And when he gets out in transition and he gets going downhill and he gets a head full of steam going to the basket and forces teams to have to try and defend him going up to the rim, it more often than not leads to fouls. Yes, there was there was one time I remember off an offensive rebound, he got called for a charge because of like because of that basically. Um, you know, there were a few turnovers he had. He had he had three turnovers. I'm I'm pretty sure at least two of them were in transition. Him trying to take go one go one on three against guys and go to the rim, right? But more often than not. When he is that aggressive and he gets going in transition, dude, he is unstoppable. And more often than not, he's going to the free throw line. And he recognizes it, and he takes advantage of it. He never goes away from it. And when you're in the half court, he can hit that three like he did at the end of the game today. Three of six from the three-point line today. He's just – he can do it all, man. He, they have him coming off double screens. Uh, doing pick and roll with guys, like having the ball in his hands, like he he can legitimately do it all. And he is the difference for this Illini team. We all said it. When he was suspended, we all said it, that this team was not a Final Four team without him. They potentially could be with him. And I know we've gone through the roller coaster of watching this team play defense, right? I know we gave up 87 today. But I don't know about you guys. But I feel like Illinois played great, def- great today defensively. I again, I know Wisconsin scored forty in the first half, forty-seven in the second half. But for some reason, I just felt like the defense was was doable. It was livable. You you didn't let certain guys just go off on you. Like Tyler Wall had a great game against you the first time around. Seven points today. Store, okay, Store's going to be an NBA player. He he owned you in the first half. He had like 16 in the first half, right? You know, Hepburn had six in the first half, ends up scoring 14 in the second half to have 20 for the game. He had a huge second half, right? And then Klesman hit four threes on his way to 16 points, right? But for most of that, the first half especially, I felt like they were a lot better defensively than the second half. Um but the first half, it felt like it was AJ Store and no one else for them. Um, and going into the second half, I was like, okay, well, if this is going to continue, the only way Wisconsin is going to hang around with Illinois is if Tyler Wall and Chucky Hepburn get going. One of them got going, but Tyler Wall never really did. And he ended up fouling, uh, fouling out. So um, maybe the fact that Tyler Wall didn't do much in this game uh, was a big reason why Wisconsin loss. They didn't get much from their bench outside of Gilmore, who had seven. But I felt like Illinois got a lot from their bench. Dane Danger. What a weekend for Dane Danger, right? He had that huge game against Ohio State, um, followed it up with another good game yesterday, and then nine points today, seven rebounds. A Co- couple huge offensive rebounds that led to dunks. I the he he hit his one free throw he made. I mean, he he has emerged here in March. Dane Danger has emerged here in March. And speaking of other guys who've emerged, Dre Gibbs Lawhorn, guys. Dre Gibbs Lawhorn. Oh, my God. Let's go. I love seeing some DGL out there in the first half, running around, 
playing defense. He even scored today. He even scored today. He played seven minutes. That's all I've been asking for all season is somewhere like five to ten minutes a game. It is defensive intensity. You could see it out there. You could see him playing hard, right? That's his role. He's learning. I love seeing him go through this experience because he's going to have a bigger role next year. I just – I love seeing him get out, like go through the ups and downs of the season, going through stretches where he didn't play like any games. And then, you know, here lately, this weekend, he played multiple games. And he's answered the call in terms of what his role is. He played his role. His layup uh, today – for his one basket was beautiful. Got kids an athlete. It's gonna be something for Illinois next year. I and 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 I only you know say it with all this emphasis because many people three months ago were like, oh, this kid's transferring out because we're not playing him, blah, blah, blah. This, his mom going crazy on Facebook, all these things, right? But he has stayed the course, man. He has been nothing but a great teammate. I see the videos Illinois is putting out that have their celebrations and he's, he's in there. He's, you know, it just, it feels like he's happy to be there. He's not pouting about not getting any play time or anything like that. Like that's, that's what I see. That's all I can tell you because I I'm not there. I don't know, but it just feels like he is, you know, accepted his role and is looking forward to a bigger role next year. I, and I, I think you, you got to have guys like that who stick around. All right. Coleman Hawkins talked a little bit about that in his post game today. And it's true. Like, yes, Brad Underwood can own the transfer portal year in and year out, but you still got to have guys who stay, got to have guys who, who want to, you know, be there right year in and year out. And guys who are familiar with their staff, familiar with, you know, the coaching staff, all the other people outside of that, that I might not even know about. Right. So I just wanted to bring those three guys up, Terrence Shan Jr., Dane Danger, Dre Gibbs Lawhorn, and then finally, Marcus Damask. Marcus Damask is ruining the lives of people from Wisconsin, brother. <laughs> mm. uh, and as you all know, I'm a Cubs, a Cubs podcaster. And that means that means that I'm not a fan of the Milwaukee Brewers, which means I'm not a big fan of the people of Wisconsin. Um let me say that Marcus Damask's tweet today after the game had me rolling. All right, I don't know if you guys saw it, but he tweeted, to my fellow Wisconsinites, I hope we can get past this heart emoji. <laughs> Ty Rogers ended up quote tweeting it with a laugh. <laughs> with like laughing emojis. I, Marcus Damask, remember in Madison, put up 31 points today. He followed that up with 26, and he had been kind of struggling this week. He struggled against Ohio State. I don't remember what he did against Nebraska, but you know he he kind of, he had kind of been struggling with his shot this weekend. I felt today showed up. He even went to the free throw line ten times, eight of eleven from the field, 26 points. He had that turnaround fadeaway jumper going, whether it was like on the uh, sideline or yeah, side of the basket or in the paint. Uh, he was able to make a couple drives. Booty ball was working. He was doing it all. He was he was showing him and Terrence Shannon showed why they have might be the best Batman and Robin in 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 the Big Ten. Arguably, right? It's hard to beat Braden Smith and 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 Zach Eady. But listen, these these two, as as one goes, the other follows. And tonight it was Terrence Shannon and Marcus Damask followed him. Um, you know, he had five turnovers. He had a couple, there was like one or two plays in the backcourt that made me want to pull my hair out. Um, but you know, overall Damask was great today and, um, you know, he had it going, man. He had it going offensively. All right, let's go to the chat. Um, Jason TSJ is boosting his NBA stop. He's unstoppable. I don't care who we play. Bring it on. Oh, I love this mentality, Jason. I love this mentality, bro. Uh, yeah. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the NCAA tournament here in a little bit. But listen, it, it the way Terrence Shannon Jr. just played in this tournament, it has to ha make you feel great going into the, into the NCAA tournament, into Omaha, because that's where they'll be. They'll be going to Omaha. Um, 
So, yeah, I, I'm with you, man. Uh, Alani cast. Uh, BYU has me worried. Number 16 in Ken Palm. Just read committee has them had them as a five seed, but got placed as a six, six seed because they can't play on Sundays. Yeah, because they're a bunch of Mormons. Uh, yes, I know. I was reading about that too. Um, BYU has been a great team this year, right? Um, they moved to the Big 12, I believe. I um, mean, they, they, you know, they did well in conference uh, for a team that used to be in the Mountain West, I believe. It was either Mountain West or the West Coast Conference. I can't remember which one. You guys can remind me. I get them both, like, mixed up. Um, but, yeah. BYU, of, of the teams they have to face – before potentially getting to that second weekend, BYU is the team that scares me the most, which is pretty obvious. Like, you know, they get to play a 14 seed in Moorhead State, which you can't sleep on. You, you just can't sleep on any team in the NCAA tournament. You just you just can't, right? So, uh, but BYU, yeah, they uh, they are what they are, right? They, they, they're a good team. Um, is this the, the classic... The classic Illinois getting gypped with, uh, you know, another team too good that got seated low or, or whatever. Perhaps. I, is this like Loyola a few years ago? Perhaps. I I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. If, if Kim, if Kim Palm had him number ranked number 16 and the committee had them as a five seed, and the only reason they're not a five seed is because um, <laughs> they can't play on Sundays. I, Whatever. What's the difference between a six and a five seed? If we're looking, if they were a five seed, we'd be talking about them potentially being upset because, like, the five seeds are always the ones getting upset. It feels like it's either it's always the the five twelves and the six eleven seeds that are that, that where the most upsets come from. So, um, to me, it is what it is. I can't. I believe in Kim Palm. I, it's a it's a great tool, um, but I'm kind of with Jason on this. Like what he said, like, I don't care who we play, bring it on. Like at the end of the day, you have to, if you're going to go to the sweet 16, if you're going to go to the elite eight, you're going to go to the final four. You, you got to have the mentality of like, I don't give a fuck who the fuck we play. <laughs> right. And I'm not saying that people aren't going to have that feeling. I understand the uh, frustration of BYU getting a six seed, uh, instead of a five because they can't play on Sundays, but uh, I don't care. Uh, it's it. I will say this. The region that Illinois is in is brutal. So no matter what, it's going to be a tough road. So bring it on. Let's go. If anything, if they get through it, I'm just going to give Brad Underwood even more credit. So that, and that's what I want to do. So um jason got to lock brad up for long term he has turned this team from the worst of the big 10 aka the gross era we are getting great players coming in year in and year out march wins are coming i agree jason i agree man man i agree we used to dream of times like this man put it on a shirt put brad put like i don't know just i don't know how you what to put on the shirt but like that's 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 to me that's how I feel when I watch this team. This arguably might be the best team since the 0405 team. And then this region is so tough that they stay that you could argue once once this is over, you might be able to argue that this team is better than the final four team if they go to a sweet 16 or an elite eight, but don't go to the final four just because they're in such a tough region. I mean they're probably going to have to go through UConn and UConn's the number one overall seed, man. Like is what it is. It sucks. I, I wish, <laughs> I wish that the region wasn't so tough, but this is, these were the cards we were dealt. And, uh, at the end of the day, you just, you just got to go out and take care of what you can control. And all I know is that Illinois is better than BYU and they're better than Moorhead state. They're better than, <sighs> The other school that I'm afraid I'm not saying right. All right. So that's where I'm at on that. Okay. Um, What were some other things? What were some other things? Oh, yes. I had them marked on my Twitter. I'm going to bring them up right now. 
We're about 25 minutes in. If you guys are watching on YouTube, please hit the like button. Please uh, hit that subscribe button if you're new here. Um, do it. Been doing a line eye post game shows and watch alongs all season long, trying to get to 500 subscribers. About 420 some uh, last time I checked. Um, so we're about 80 away. Maybe we can hit, get over 500 before the end of March. Uh, before uh, you know, hopefully, if Illinois keeps winning games, we'll continue to be able to to uh, do this, and maybe I'll surp- surpass that number um, sooner rather than later. But if you are new here, please hit that subscribe button. Um, it means a lot, and it's greatly appreciated. Um, Garrett in the chat. I don't understand the fear of BYU. Illinois is head and shoulders above the Cougars. Um, admittedly, I haven't watched a lot of BYU this year. I've followed their box scores a few times just for gambling reasons, but I can't say that I've watched a ton of their, their games. So I'm going to have to pull up the old YouTube machine and watch some of their highlights. I, I know they, they like they can score the ball, that's for sure. I think they're, you know, I think they're a really good defensive team. But I don't know. I I think that a team like BYU shouldn't scare Illinois. I think if any if there's any team out there that should scare Illinois is if BYU gets upset and then that team, you know, comes in playing with house money against Illinois. And you know, when you have that kind of momentum, anything can happen. We see it in March. So in, in some ways, I'm kind of hoping BYU wins and and that we don't have to deal with the fact of facing like a multiple upsets in in one weekend, right? Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm way off on that. But I, you are right, Garrett. I'm just not – I'm not really afraid of BYU at all, really. So – um. So in Brad Underwood's presser, there were two things that he said that had me ready to run through a wall. All right. Well, one thing had me ready to run through a wall, and then another thing made reminded me why how much I love him. <laughs> uh, okay. So he was asked about you know the the fact that they haven't made it to a Sweet Sixteen since two thousand five. Uh, not a lot of tournament tournament success. Um, and he said, it's not about checking a box. They came here to win a national. I came here to win a national championship. We are here to win a national championship. And th- and if those goals ever change, then I probably don't need to be your ball coach anymore. And I just love the fact that he didn't shy away from like, you know, the criticism, the fact that Illinois hasn't done it yet. He goes through uh, and explains, you know, Programs go through get 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 upsets and and stuff like that and I don't know I just I commend him for for owning that that stuff and that's one thing why I've always kind of commended him is he doesn't to me he doesn't make excuses I don't I to you know how many times I've I've seen a guy like Tom Izzo complain about the refs in a post game or something like that I, I don't feel like I see or hear Brad Underwood do that. Like ever, he doesn't make excuses. He just, he, whenever things are going well, he gives credit to the players, and when things are going bad, he takes the blame. So that's that's how I feel that he does things. Let me know if you think differently. Um, but I just love that answer that he gave in his post game today. Um, the other one was over the weekend. Uh, everyone watching or listening to this probably knows what I'm talking about. There was a like a hot tub photo of him, uh, Brad Underwood, with like four players that went viral. Um, or yeah, that the Illini basketball account tweeted out. It was like Ty Rogers, Luke Goody, Damask, Justin Harmon, and Quincy Gary, like in a, in a yeah in a hot tub or whatever. And uh, they asked him, or it was a cold tub. Sorry. Uh, and he said the quote, I didn't know I looked that good with my shirt off or something like that. <laughs> and uh, I just thought that was funny. Uh, he can show a little humor at times, too. So uh said I had to show them that the old man has a little toughness in him. So I, I think that shows how like much the players really enjoy him, uh, support him, are happy to play for him. 
Because I think Illini fans have questioned that over the years, especially with the amount of guys who have transferred out. And so I, I think a lot of that, you know, that the, those conspiracy theories or whatever, I think a lot of it is just bullshit. <laughs> you know, I, I think that this picture that the Illini basketball Twitter tweeted out kind of explains that. I know that, you know, that their own Twitter account tweeted that out, but maybe it's with this team. Uh, and not necessarily previous teams, but I just I've never bought into the whole like, you know, the the stuff he's criticized because of, you know, certain guards transferring out and stuff like that. And it's easy for me to say right now because we just won the Big Ten Tournament Championship and all this. I'm not saying that he shouldn't have any criticism whatsoever when it comes to some of this stuff, because, of course, the big criticism for him this year probably is the fact that they don't really have a true point guard. Right. And. I won't be surprised if it's the reason that they don't have March success, right? Admittedly, for me. So we'll see what happens, but I just wanted to bring that up because it just seems like the the narrative that, you know, sometimes him and players don't see eye to eye. Uh, I wouldn't say that it's not bullshit, but I think – he has a good relationship with every player on the team and at least this year. And I, that's good to see. And when he talks about how they're all connected and all this stuff, I, I, I don't think it's just coaches talking. I, I, I truly believe what he's saying. So those are two things that I saw online that made me happy after the game outside of just them celebrating and stuff like that. Um, yeah, man, it was great post game stuff from him, Coleman and, and Marcus to One thing this was like the very last question asked to him. Um, there was, I don't remember who the reporter was, but it was, again, it was the very last question asked to him. And it was about Terrence Shannon and like his off the court stuff. And the fact that he hasn't been allowed, like, like the team hasn't allowed Terrence Shannon to talk to the media at all. And admittedly, before I started doing this podcast, I did not realize that they that schools could just do that or teams or whatever. Whoever is making sure that no media member is getting Terrence Shannon in front of a microphone and a and it hitting record. Um, it's wild to me that they can just do that. But um, he Brad Underwood was asked the question of what was it? He was asked the question of does like if, you know, with how good Terrence Shannon has been, it's bringing up, you know, he's going to be talked about. And that means that his the the, the rape case is going to be brought up. And the fact that no one has getting access to to him, it's going to make the media uh, more upset about it and all this stuff. And like Brad basically just said, it's like, well, I'm just the coach. And, and he said everything I would have expected him to because he doesn't have any say in, in any of that. He is just the coach. I Again, I don't know who is who who makes these calls of like who gets to talk to the media or not. But um, I I don't know why they're asking Brad this question. I guess it's just because he ha- they, they had to, I guess. But, um, you know, he said the same thing over and over related to this case about the fact that, you know, he was put in a situation where he was just told to coach and he didn't make any of the decisions on him come on Terrence Shannon coming back from the suspension or anything like that. So he's just coaching who's in the locker room and that's fine. All right. I do expect if Illinois does make a deep run, I do expect Terrence Shannon's case to get talked about more and more. Um, and that is what it is, man. I, I think I think we just have to embrace the villain role here, right? And I hate that. I really do hate that we have to do that in some ways. And I kind of like way back when he first came back and I've kind of shifted away from talking about that over the last month and a half just because it's it was starting to affect me and my mental health with some of the things people were saying to me online, specifically on TikTok and in the YouTube comments. Um, 
I guess the reason that I did that is because at the end of the day, I don't, I don't know. And I, I've read what I've read makes me believe that he is probably going to get off innocent here. And I want to believe based off all the good things that people have said about Terrence Shannon Jr. And hell, even like his one family friend that I met at the Illinois Northwestern game in Evanston, you know, a couple months ago talking to him. I want to believe that he comes from a good family and he is, you know, getting he's getting the the short end of the stick here on this on this on what's what he's being accused of and that's just because i don't want someone to be sexually assaulted or, or raped or whatever um it's it's a tough situation it's like i i f- it's hard to talk about from my perspective right um i just I guess I'm just I'm bringing this up a little bit now just because I do feel like if Illinois advances to a second weekend it will be talked about a ton. Um and it kind of died down. It kind of died down over this last handful of weeks. Um but now that, you know, the national stage is here, Illinois is going to be on national television every single game. Um and hey, I work I work in media. I know how it works. It's going to be something that people talk about, right? I don't think it's going to become a distraction with Illinois. Um but I think for Illini fans as we go through this, if they do in fact make this deep run, I think we as Illini fans just kind of have to embrace being the villain. Uh, that's the only way that we're going to be able to mentally get through it. <laughs> like that's the only, like I'm not going to go and defend every single thing about Terrence Shannon Jr. Online to random people. I've read some nasty things um, from other fan bases and I've bit my, bit my lip, bit my tongue on a lot of it because it's just not worth it to me. Um, But to me, like I've always said, you're innocent until proven guilty. That's what I've always believed. And that's what I'm sticking with. And based off what I've read, based off what we all know in the public, that's where I stand. But I'm I'm just putting out the warning to Illini fans that if this does, if this game this if this season, you know, continues to more than just next weekend. This this topic could be, you know, emphasized some more again, and we can all sit here and admit that we felt like it died down a little bit over the last month. So, just trying to prepare the people, um, just try to be, try to try to live up to what your character is. I assume everyone who's watching is is a decent person. Um, it just, I'm telling y'all, it's just ain't it ain't worth fighting with trolls and random fan bases about this kind of thing it's 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 not worth talking about this kind of shit online either it just isn't so that's that's what i got on that man um that's probably about the only negative thing that's overshadowing this team all season is just like this off the court stuff that that happened with taron shannon at in lawrence kansas back during the fall and it is what it is um he's here now he was able. He did what he could to get back on the team, and he's here. So, uh, I I don't think any other fan base should sit here and judge because their fan. Their, if it was the same situation on their team, they would probably be happy that their guy was playing too. So, um, you know, everyone can have their own double standard, uh, but just acknowledge that. You're probably, you know, acknowledge that Illinois isn't the only school that's ever had to go through this. Okay. That's uh that's all I have. Victor says in the chat, uh, Shannon's attorneys have a say in his press availability as well. Or I'm sure Shannon's avail oh Shannon's attorneys have a say in his press ability as well. And that's probably true. I I don't know. I would love to know how this goes. I I don't know. And I, I wish 
I might have to like DM one of like just the regular Illini reporters or something and ask like how that works. Cause I really have no idea. So maybe I'll do that and get back to y'all on that. Uh, Victor disappointed. of the reporters laughed when Underwood said he didn't realize how good he looked without a shirt on. <laughs> uh, I won't guess who that reporter is. Um, Almighty Finn. Hey, I'm an Illini fan that lives in Indiana. The dirty looks I get. How come Illini don't recruit the state of Indiana more? Sorry if I go off topic. Go Illini. Hey, Lou Goody's from Indiana. Lou Goody's from Indiana, all right? Um, I don't know, man. I'm just glad that they're recruiting out of Chicago and guys from Chicago are coming to Illinois. Uh, Terrence Shannon being one of those. I know he's a transfer star at Texas Tech, but they did recruit him originally, and they did end up getting him to come to Illinois. I would assume him from Chicago as well. I The fact that they're recruiting out of Chicago, uh, something that they really struggled to do back in the day during the gross era, during even the, ba- the back end years of the, the Weber era, speaks volumes, man, speaks volumes. So um, I'm never going to re- worry about recruiting when it comes to Brad Underwood, because year in and year out, he's bringing in talent, right? I know last year they had a lot of talent and it just didn't gel well together. Um, this year he got it right, man. This year he got it right and uh, he deserves all the credit for it. All right. Um, th- one more thing. I kind of mentioned DGL earlier, was giving him his flowers. Um, I didn't bring up his tweet that he sent. Uh, I'm bringing it up now and I just love it because again, he's gotten a lot of slander from Purdue fans, hell, even Illinois fans in at some parts of the season, I think, or maybe it's not necessarily him. Maybe it's just fans pissed that Brad wasn't playing him. All I know is that I feel like DGL has, is kind of blossoming into what, He's, he's kind of kickstarting to what could be next year, right? Um, and I just think anything he gives them here in March will only be a plus for them, you know? Um, so <laughs> Dre gives Law, Lawhorn uh, shortly after the game, right? He tweeted, there's so much shit emoji. I want to talk right now, but I'm going to kill y'all with this. No minutes, no stats. Threats, haters, everyone telling me I'm not good enough. Well, get ready because this only the beginning. And at the end, you won't have a choice but to respect me. Hashtag they hate me because they ain't me. <laughs> and then he tweeted right after that. Damn, I know y'all sick. A laughing emoji. Uh, listen, I'm cheering for for DGL, man. He I I just can I, I really believe that he has um you know, taking the right path. He's learning a lot from a lot of these older players this year. And I think he can take this experience into next year and and really have a a bigger role and be a a big factor on next year's team. So I just love that he sent that. I don't know who he's subtweeting, uh, but all I know is that through various parts of this season, a lot of people said some negative things about him. And uh, good, good to see him score in the Big Ten Tournament Championship game today play important minutes that mean something. I think everyone who watched the game knows how much of an impact he made on the game. It's not going to show up in the box score, but if you watch the game, you saw how much of an impact he made when he was out there. So, uh, Adam in the chat, national press already hating quite a bit on Illini, making it sound like it's a coin flip against Moorhead state and a trendy pick is BYU taking us out. Listen, you know what? A, a, you know what's also trendy is taking uh, McNeese and Sanford. All right, McNeese against uh, what was it, Gonzaga, and then Sanford over Kansas, um, which is like a four thirteen and a five twelve. That's what they're always going to talk about when it when you want to when when these brackets come out and you talk about potential upsets. Everyone goes to those six eleven, five twelve. 314 or 413 uh or not 413 four four uh yeah 413 yeah yeah whatever i don't know 413 i don't know i can't math i i'm getting my matchups mixed up in my head 
those 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 looking at those and uh you know getting the talk out you know ha- they're talking heads on tv they have to talk about something um i think the national people are doing that because they know that illinois hasn't had tournament success in the underwood era they they know this right um so it, maybe to some of them it's you know you got to prove it until they see it and i think this Illini team can 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 do some damage can open some eyes can raise some eye, eyebrows man like i could care less what some of these national guys are saying right i and and i bring up mcneese and i bring up sanford because i was doing the the watch along of the selection show it's on my youtube channel if you haven't watched it i we went through we watched the entire thing on it's about i don't know what 37 38 minutes we did the whole thing and whenever they released the bracket that side of the bracket and it was mcneese and gonzaga and kansas and um sanford uh my first reaction was oh hammer mcneese all right like and hammer sanford if if hunter dickinson can't play right like they're trendy picks. It's like an obvious one. And that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to win or lose or whatever as in Gonzaga or Kansas. It's just trendy picks because we watch and we watch March Madness year in, year out. And it feels like a five seed is losing to a 12 every year. And same thing with uh, some of these even lower seeds too. I mean, shit, we saw a couple of two seeds lose last year to the fifteen. Um, we've seen the one seed finally lose to the 16 twice now. Uh, it's just, I, they have, they have to talk about, uh, you know, upsets and stuff that get people talking. And so I guess I'm just letting y'all know that like, that's kind of their job. Like, and I know this because it's kind of what I, what I do. (laughs) All right. So let them talk, man. I hope, I hope, uh, Brad Underwood's taking receipts, you know? Hope they're taking receipts. Uh, Victor says Billis has a line eye in the Elite Eight, though. So, listen, I like Jay Billis. I think he's smart. I think he knows what he's talking about. That one fits my narrative, so I'm a bit, I'm a Jay Billis guy now. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the NCAA tournament here for the last few minutes. Uh, we're kind of talking about it right now, obviously. They're going to play Moorhead State on Thursday. I think it's like a 2 o'clock game. Uh, Illinois, the three seed uh, against the 14 seeded Moorhead State. Admittedly, I haven't watched any Moorhead State. They're an OVC. I went to Eastern Illinois University. I know Moorhead State. I know that uh, when I was in college, uh, Kenneth Kenneth Fareed had was was playing there when I was in college, I believe. And that was like those were some good years from them. But like in recent years, I, I really couldn't tell you like what's going on with their team. So I'm going to have to watch some tape on them. I can't sit here and confidently say that Illinois is going to steamroll Moorhead State. But based most of these teams, most of these mid-major schools, I get these, you know, 14, 15, uh, 12, 13, 14, 15 seeded, seeds are significantly smaller than these schools from the Power Five. So What's Moorhead probably going to try and do? They're probably going to try and shoot a ton of threes, and they're probably going to try and slow the game down. That way there's less possessions. And if they hit their threes and there's less possessions, then perhaps they're in the game, and it's low scoring, and so they can hang around with the limited scoring that they probably have. That's just kind of like my pre-thought process. And this is how I watch. Like, for instance, like – Nothing against San Diego State last year, but, you know, from the Mountain West, no one thought they were going to go as deep as they did, and they were one of the best defensive teams in the tournament last year, right? They played slow. There was low possessions. Uh, You took the under in every single one of their games probably, right? Um, I assume that Moorhead State will probably try and do that. Um, I can bring them up on Kempom right now and just see if I'm anywhere close to that. Um, I guess – what scares me a little bit is that Moorhead, uh, they've they're going to have more rest than Illinois going into this game, right? Because Illinois played today and that, and now they have what Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off, and they're probably going to have a practice, a couple practices in there. Um, 
you know, <sighs> yeah, I, I, that's, that's really the only thing that scares me about is the fact that they're going to have more rest. Um, trying to find them on Kim Palm. Do, 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 do. Morehead State. They're ranked 111th in Kim Palm, 26 and 8. They're 124th in adjusted offensive efficiency and 120th in adjusted defensive efficiency. And there it is. Adjusted tempo, they're ranked 335, 335 in the country, which is one of the lowest in the country. Um, so they play slow. Uh, I think their defensive efficiency certainly helps Illinois. Illinois should be able to score at will against this team, right? If they're ranked 120th in defensive efficiency, uh, you know, first one to 90 wins. I said this during the live stream today, watching against Wisconsin, first one to 90 wins. And Illinois was the first one. To 90 and they won so um you know just based off these rankings and stuff like that right now um yeah i mean i morehead will probably try and play slow and we'll see what happens but illinois enters the tournament ranked 10th in in kempom uh, third in off adjusted offensive efficiency and 93rd in adjusted defensive efficiency um you know, the defense is the big question, right? I think as we go through, as we start this tournament, I think we're all wondering about the defense. I do think we all probably feel a little bit better about the defense. Um, their defense isn't consistent throughout the entire game, but it feels like in recent weeks, since the Penn State game, at least, they have been able to lock in defensively when it matters most. Um, they got key stops against Wisconsin today, right? Um, yeah, they, they. I think the defense has is is improved a little bit. I don't think it's going to get any better than what it is, but it has improved a little bit. But they should be able to handle Morehead State just based off athleticism and size that they have, right? Morehead State is not going to be able to guard Terrence Shannon Jr. They're just not. Okay. <sighs> All right. Um, we're about 52 minutes in. Uh, I got to fill out my bracket still. I haven't filled out my bracket. Maybe we'll uh, do Maybe we'll do a bracket show on Wednesday or something. I don't know. It depends. I'm going to be out at Circa, uh, Circa Sportsbook in Waukegan on Thursday for, C for CHGO. But... I'm going to be out there watching games. If anyone lives out in the North Burbs and wants to head on over there, I'll be there on Thursday for the first games of March Madness. Should be a lot of fun. So that said, I won't be doing the wa like the live watch along for Illinois' first game uh, against Moorhead State, but I will I will do a post game show later that night. Um. Yeah, we'll see how things go on Saturday. I'm still kind of unconfirmed about my plans for Saturday, but um, we'll talk when we get – hopefully Illinois wins the game so we, we can talk about it, right? Um, final thing I wanted to m mention or bring up from this game against Wisconsin. Didn't bring it up yet. Ty Rogers, all right? Ty Rogers – had five rebounds today, three were offensive rebounds, and one offensive rebound really, really shifted the momentum towards Illinois. Um, or it kind of – it was one of the few daggers that started to be thrown at Wisconsin when Illinois made that comeback, right? Um, I believe Illinois led 67-65. Uh, let me just bring it up play by play just to because I don't want to be wrong on this. Um, 67, 65, I believe. I want to say Marcus Damask hit a three off a Coleman off or an off a Ty Rogers. Um, a Ty Rogers. 
offensive rebound. Yeah, it was 65 67. All right. What happened? Illinois had a possession that led to a Luke Goody wide open three. And Ty Rogers goes up and gets this rebound like the dog that he is, literally wanting the ball more than anyone else on the court. That's what it looked like. That's what it felt like. And he gets this rebound, comes down, is basically falling out of bounds almost, throws the ball out to Marcus Damask for a wide open three. This is at the 920 920 mark of the second half. Marcus Damask hits the three point jump, jumper to make it 65 to 70. Um, and that was like, that was when Illinois really started to take control of the game, right? Um, after they made that comeback. And I just think that kind of describes Marcus Damask and his importance on this team. Or not Marcus Damas, uh, Ty Rogers. It, it describes Ty Rogers' importance on this team. Um, he is the X factor, man. And it, he, he doesn't always have to score the ball, but his defensive intensity, the fact that he can guard almost anyone on the court, the fact that he can dribble drive, spin one way or spin the other, and, and, and turn it into a layup or a jump hook, a uh, teardrop, whatever, and get to the free throw line as well. And hit free throws. Just I, it, he is on the cusp of really becoming a really good college basketball player next year, if he can get that confidence to want to jump, shoot a jump shot, because that's just something that he hasn't done at all this year, right? Um, Ty Rogers, that offensive rebound, honestly, just kind of described his importance to Illinois in that moment alone, and. I just want to emphasize how great of a player he is and how much how important he is to this Illinois team if they're going to do something in March. He made a huge play and a huge moment for Illinois um, to you know extend that lead to five uh, when the game was you know one possession for a while, back and forth one possession for a while. He extended it to five and it led to a Wisconsin timeout. Uh, Kudos to him, man. He's he is a great basketball player for someone that when you look in the stat sheet, you're just kind of like, who is this guy? <laughs> right. If you're an opposing team, you're looking at a stat sheet for him and you're like, why do people talk about this guy? Seven points, seven or seven points, five rebounds, one steal and a block. Um, three of six from the field. Like it he only played 17 minutes today, but he he just played key minutes uh, and, and and played his role really, really, really well. He plays his role really, really well, right? So that's that's all I had to say about that about him. Uh, he he's someone that he could be the difference for this Illini team in March in in the between winning a game and losing a game, right? So, all right, been doing this for about an hour. Uh, again, Illinois, Big Ten tournament champions. Again, do not take this this era for granted, guys. Again, we we want, we want, we need more tournament success, more March success. But all Brad Underwood has done since he came here is own the Big Ten. If it's him and Matt Painter, if anything, all Brad Underwood did this weekend was increase the the reason why he should have been co big 10 coach of the year this year. All right. That's just, that's, that's what I think. And um, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep shoving it down people's throats. Uh, the more this guy wins and doesn't get recognized for it. Um, yeah. So uh, again, we'll see what happens going forward. Um I'm not again. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do another show before Thursday. It's just a busy time with the baseball season coming up. Uh, but um, we'll check back in, and uh, if anything, we'll maybe live stream or something from Circa on Thursday from on TikTok or something like that. I don't know. I was live streaming on YouTube and on TikTok today, so um, we'll see where what happens. But 
Anyway, guys, uh, I appreciate y'all for uh, tuning in tonight's show. It's a late one. Wasn't able to do it right after the game because I was doing the selection show and then I had to clip something and all these things. And so uh, it's been a busy night, busy day. But at the end of the day, I get to go to sleep tonight with Illinois as uh, Big Ten tournament champion champions for 2024. It's a beautiful thing to say. It's a beautiful thing to say. So if you're on YouTube, please hit the like button on your way out. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't. I appreciate y'all. Uh, y'all support has mean so much to me this year. Um, we ride or legitimately die on Thursday. All right. So uh, stay tuned for what's coming up. Uh, again, I I believe that we are a second weekend team this year, man. I truly believe it. And I think we're set up in a nice spot of the bracket to at least get there, to at least get there. I think we're set up nicely for it. So uh, I hope I hope I'm right. I hope on this one I'm at least right. All right. So I will see y'all later this week. Uh, drink a little orange Kool-Aid tonight because we deserve it. Text your friends, call your parents, call your parents, parents, tell them I L L. And, uh, when you go to work tomorrow, wear some orange, wear that orange tie. I guess I'm going to wear an orange hoodie to the CHGO studios tomorrow. I have to, I have to. All right. Maybe I'll wear my D Brown Jersey just for hell for shits and gigs. All right. Okay. Uh, I'm done going off and then different tangents y'all have a good rest of your night and as always i l l